focus on the Lord this morning. Mm -hmm. Can we do that? We can. Anybody want to hear from God this morning? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think yeah. that would be a good thing. We've been going through a series called Focus. We're a church that wants to be focused on the things that God is focused on. Can you agree with me this morning? Amen. We want to be focused on what God is focused on, right? I can, I can focus on a lot of things in life. I can focus on oh, my success. I can focus on tomorrow. I can focus on uh, what the world would want me to. I can focus on, on, on my family, on myself. But man, I'm challenged, and I hope that we are challenged to be focused on the things that God's heart is focused on. And the first thing that we, we notice that God's focus is God is focused on the lost. We want to be a people who find lost people. Why? Because God is the one who searched and left just so he could find the one. And we also want to be ones that are focused on finding the lost. Last week we said we should be people who are focused on doing something. We are called to do something with the unique ways that God has gifted us, the unique passions that God has given us. And we, when we are people who do something with who we are, we are again an example of, of who Christ is. Right? Jesus didn't consider his position something to be used for his own advantage or for his own purpose. He came to do something about the lost. And that's the same opportunity that we have to do something. We gotta look at who we are. Ask God, God, what is it that you have uniquely gifted me and given me passions for to do something for your kingdom and, and for your church? Today's focus is going to be on a church that gives generously. If you came looking for hope this morning, if you came looking for restoration or or focus, uh, at the end of the day's message, I want to. Know, let you know that we will have an opportunity to respond to the message of hope. I believe, no matter what the time is, that we can find hope, peace, and purpose in Jesus. And so this eve today, we're going to have that opportunity. So if you have your Bibles this morning, we're going to turn to uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. Or if you have an electronic app, go ahead and open up your Bible app. Flip to 1 Peter chapter 4. The Bible app is a good thing. If you don't have it already downloaded on your phone, go ahead and do so today, because uh, on there you can find reading plans, devotionals. Uh, if you've ever, uh, if you've ever wanted to read through uh, the, the Bible in a year or in six months, or go through the New Testament, it has plans on there. And, and this week, even I set myself up with a reminder, so every morning, now at 6.30, it reminds me, hey, Andrew, if you haven't already, read the Word. And I'm like, all right, I kind of like this. So I'm going through a devotional plan myself. Uh, so anyway, the Bible app is an important thing. This morning, uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7 through 11, it reads this way. Everything in the world is about to be wrapped up, so take nothing for granted. Stay wide awake in prayer. Most of all, love each other as if your life depend on it. Love makes up for the practically everything. Be quick to give a meal to the hungry, a bed to the homeless. Cheerfully be generous with the different things that God gave you, passing them around so that all get in on it. If words, let it be the words of God. If help, let it be God's hearty help. That way, God's bright presence will be evident in everything through Jesus. And he'll get all the credit as the one mighty in everything. Let's pray this morning. Father, we are grateful again to be gathered, to hear your word, to receive from you, to be challenged by you, to be encouraged, to be lifted up. Father, I pray that your word this morning would penetrate the deepest part of our hearts, we would be encouraged to walk with you another step. In Jesus' name, amen. I remember the first gift that Rachel and I uh, gave extravagantly. Uh, as Rachel and I got married, I realized even more so how different we are. Where I love to, um, to collect things. Anybody else like to collect 
and to hold on and like to make sure I have everything that I need. Rachel is very different than myself and challenges me all the time in gift giving. So I remember the first time as a couple we had an opportunity to share a gift with somebody and it was a missionary that had come to our church and God spoke to us and said, hey, why don't you go follow them to the gas station and fill their gas tank up? And so we were college students, newlyweds, paycheck to paycheck kind of situation, and we said, you know what, we're going to be obedient to God, and we're going to go ahead and follow the missionaries to the gas tank and, and fill the gas tank. At that time, we had some small cars, we had some, you know, we, we were used to filling up maybe $20, you know, would get us a couple weeks in the gas tank. Uh, but we started to fill up the gas tank, and, and it was, you know, five gallons went in. I was like, all right, this is good, you know. Then 10 gallons went in. I was like, okay, price is getting a little up. 15 gallons went in, get a little more. I think that it was the 20, 20 gallon tank, they were on empty, and it cost us about $60 to fill up, to fill up the whole tank. And I was like, oh my goodness, it is kind of, it is kind of stretching me. But as I've been married, now we've been married 13 years this summer, May 19th, glorious day, good celebrations. But we have grown in learning how to give. I remember the first time we gave away a check, a uh, cash actually, because we did some Dave Ramsey, so we had like a, you know, put away the money and have little envelopes, and we were uh, going regularly to this ice cream shop and while we lived at New University. And we were at an ice cream shop and we had collected our little money for vacation. If you've taken Dave Ramsey classes, he teaches you, you know, to, to save up. You put a little envelope, put vacation envelope, you put $20 in there a month, you know. And you have to car repairs, you put a little money in there every month and make sure that everything has a budget, every dollar has a place to go. And, and uh, we had collected, you know, good, a little good chunk of money. It was over $500 in our, like, our fun, our fun do whatever you want kind of envelope. And, uh, so we had been going to this uh, ice cream shop for a while, and, and we were kind of new with this, maybe a little naive. We, we still held like all the envelopes with us. We had a, too much money, uh, uh, too much money that we would carry around, but we were like, you know, we gotta do the envelope system. We can't put it in the bank. We gotta know where everything's going. And so um, we had a few hundred dollars with us, and we were at the ice cream place, and God said, pay for her rent. You never challenge us with that. I mean, that's like, that's a little bit more than just $20, $60 gas tank. And I remember the moment that God it challenged us to do so. We went into our, our bank account, or uh, sorry, into our, our car. We got into our envelopes and, and we said, okay, how much would rent be? I said, okay, well, our rent is $500. We knew this lady because we had been talking, uh, talking with her. She had a child or two. It's okay, we're just walk across here. Good. Hi, all you internet people. Hi, live feed. Okay. Um, and so uh, we 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 went ahead and we got out there and we said, all right, five hundred dollars is our rent. Okay. She has a couple of kids. And God said, no, give her eight hundred dollars. And so I remember Rachel and I like counting it out. Like we're like, all right. And you know, you, you hold a twenty dollar bill in your hand. You know, you could you know. Hundred dollars got a little bit more, and it's like this is a pretty, this is a pretty large sum, you know. For we're missionaries, we're living on a couple thousand a month. That was about it, and I said that's a, that's about a third of our monthly income right here. I said, all right, God, we're going to go ahead, we're going to do it. We walked into the place. We said, hey, we don't know what. I think we got a car, maybe even. And, and we said, we don't know exactly what we're going through, but, but God just instructed us that we were supposed to give you this money, or this car. We just told her the car. So we gave her the car, and she went ahead and opened it up, and she was cards. Balling. Crying. That was kind of awkward in the moment. Rachel was a little bit more sympathetic to me, so she knew what, she knew what to do. Like, go ahead and talk. She goes, she goes come to the back. She goes, so we came to the back of the ice cream restaurant and we found out her life story, the difficulties that she's going through, the things that had happened and the fact that she didn't have a rent payment. And, and the amount that we gave, it was, it was 
it wasn't exactly 800, it was right around the number, but it was the exact amount for her, uh, for her rent and her utility bills that had not been paid because of the crisis that she was going through. And I said, to me, that moment, since then, I think I've become a, a little bit better. We're working on it. We're working on this generosity thing. But it was such an opportunity to walk in what God is like. And I remember the, the, the feeling afterwards, like, I didn't care that we just lost. It just cost me to be obedient to God. It just cost me my fun money. I had collected this. I had worked on this. But it was so amazing to be in this moment of obedience to give away something that cost me greatly so that uh, somebody else could be provided for. That little picture that day gave me a little insight into the joy I believe God feels when he is generous towards us. I was thinking about God and how he set up the garden for Adam and Eve. And God gives us everything that we need. I hope that you're convinced of that this morning. If not, throughout the message, I hope that God reveals that to you. God gives us everything we need. When he set up the garden for Adam and Eve, man, he provided them all the food, all the land. Everything that they could ever need was provided for them. Because God's heart is generous. Generosity is at the center of God's heart. What he has is not used for his own advantage. Everything that he has is given to us. We see this in Jesus, right? So Jesus, when he came as king over all things, he came not like any other earthly king that he would come and he would try to take and he would try to receive and he would try to overcome and, and conquer so that he could become big. No, Jesus was, was solid in his identity that he had everything. And so when he came, his mission was not to receive, but was to give. This is the heart of God. John 3, 16. For this is how God loved the world that he gave. He gave. He gave his one and his only. He gave his best. He gave the greatest. He gave exactly what was needed. He didn't short, he didn't short it. He didn't shortcut. He said, no, exactly what is needed, I'm going to give. Even if it cost me the greatest. Why? So that everyone who believes in him would not perish, but would have eternal life. Right? He didn't think of this for his own advantage. He didn't think of these things to, 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 to use for himself. No, he said, everything I have, my greatest possession, I give to you so that you may have life. I was thinking about this as I was uh, went to Costco on Friday morning because we had some just regular household items to go and pick up. So we got there. Uh, we had breakfast at Chick Fil A because you know Chick Fil A is the best. But anyway, uh, we went to Chick Fil A and then we we rolled our way over to Costco. We got there a little early. It was about 9:35. If you know, Costco opens at 10, and we pulled up in, and there was like. The parking lot was full. And it was still 30 minutes. We, I wasn't thinking. I was, I, just, uh, I, I was just going to get some items. And so as we waited there, about I got on the phone. I actually talked to Triana. We were sitting in the uh, Costco parking lot. You know, and it was like 10 minutes went by. About 20 more people came. And they, they, some of us were sitting in our cars. And some of us started lining up at the Costco place and, and, and in front of the place. And by the time... 10, they opened the doors 10 minutes early. It was 9.52-ish that they opened the doors. There was at least 100 people already waiting there for them to open the doors. And then people just rushing in to buy things and the chaos that is going on right now. I, I read recently of a, of a story. Uh, there was an older gentleman 
in his 70s that went to Walmart, again, just for his normal routine. And he said, all right, I gotta pick up my, my milk, my bread, and my, uh, he needed toilet paper, he needed uh, paper products. And so he went there and he goes, and there was, there was nothing. And he just started crying at the counter because there was no more paper products and he needed some paper products. And, and he commented to the people around him he was reminded of the time, the era in the U.S. where we had the Great Depression. He said, it's so different now. Everybody is thinking about themselves. He says, when we went through this uh, situation, and, and, and it's not exactly comparable, I, I'm not going to say that this morning, but he said, people were helping each other. and Everything that we had, we would share with those who were in need. And we would share with our neighbors. So I wanted to challenge us this morning in a specific time where, where chaos and fear and, 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 and man, disorder is, is taking over and then hoarding is, is taking over, that we would be, we would stand up and be like God, would be the church who gives generously to those who are in need around us, that we would care for those this morning. I know there's multiple people joining us online, that's why I keep on mentioning them, you know, because they're at home, they can't go to the store, they can't go to public places, maybe, uh, maybe they're, they are in the, in the generation that, that, that needs uh, to be more cautious, maybe they have some immune disease, I know, that, as I mentioned, some of them are, are sick at home, we, we need to be considerate of them, and say, hey, how can we be like God in this moment, where our, our natural instincts right now is to, to hoard and to protect and to keep to ourselves, when actually right now is an amazing opportunity for us as a church to stand up and say, no, I, I want to choose to be like God. I want to choose to be generous. I'm choose to, I want to choose to take care of those who are in need. And I believe right now is an opportunity in a dark time for the light of God to shine the brightest. Amen. Amen. So let's, let's consider Amen. this. How can we be a people who are generous? Like God that doesn't even think of his greatest possession as a use for himself, but he gave in order that others would be blessed. I'm going to introduce the story of Abraham. Abraham receives a blessing from God. That he was to look up, to see the stars, and he said that the, his descendants would number the stars. I don't know about you, but I would, I mean, man, I would see, I would see the blessing of the Lord. Abraham received the blessing of the Lord, but but realized that, that the necessity to receive this blessing was that he was to have offspring. He needed offspring in order to create offspring, in order for him to, to fulfill this blessing where, the, where all the, where his descendants would, would amount to the stars that covered the skies. And it wasn't immediately that God answered this blessing. Actually, it took time. Read the story of Abraham, it took time. And it became old. And, and there's even times where Abraham tried to do it his own way and, he, and he created a song, but the son that was outside of what God was trying to bless. But in his old age, God did give him a son. And we're going to see this morning how this challenge, God challenged Abraham about his son. Because we're going to see this, that that God doesn't actually need our finances. God has everything. He can speak something into existence, and it has to obey His words. God doesn't need what we have. Giving and, and being generous is not about money. It is about our hearts. It's about whether we are focused on what God is focused on. If we have the heart of God, if our, if our eyes, if our heart have been sink to God's heart that says, no, it's not about what I have, but it's what I can do. It's not about the finances. It is about our heart. See, in the story of Abraham, after he has received the, 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 the beginning of his blessing, he has received a son, and God's came to him and visited him, and he said, Now give your son to me. You know, if I was in that moment, and God said, give, give, 
Denver to me, I would say, you know what? Yes, God, I mean, he's your son. He's your son. Lord, bless him. Yes, Lord, keep him. But, but, but in this moment, God was asking of Abraham something even greater than just a dedication. It was something greater than just a bless him and, and let him be used for my purposes. God said, no, go and sacrifice your son. Could you imagine? You finally feel like you have what you, you got it. I, you know, I, I remember that moment. I, I had an envelope that actually had that much money. I have what I need. I, I got a blessing from God. I, I got the answer to the promise. I got exactly what he needed. I have it all. Like I said, I, I tend to like to collect more than to release. God spoke to Abraham and said, Give me your son. Jesus in the New Testament, he told this story about a serpent who, need, who needed his debt forgiven. He had a debt that he owed that was insurmountable. It was multiple times what he could make in a year, multiple times what he could owe, and, and he came to the master and he, he begged them for forgiveness. Anybody familiar with this story? And he begged, Lord, he said, Master, forgive me, I, I can't pay it. What did that master do in that moment? He released them. He released them of the debt. I mean, I'm waiting. No, I, I have an opportunity to pay off a, a, one of my debts from college. I'm like super excited about it. I still have a little bit more, and if anybody else, you know, if God wants to just, you know, eradicate all that, I would be, I would be grateful. I would be happy. I would celebrate. I would dance a little bit, you know. And sure enough, that's exactly what the servant did. He had a little moment of joy, but then immediately afterwards, he remembered there's somebody else that owes me. There's somebody else that owed me some money. And he went to that person. Deborah, what do you think he did? He asked him for his money. He asked him for his money. He said, give me my money. Give me what you owe me. It's the opposite of what just happened to him. And, and the guy, what, Deborah, do you know what he said afterwards? No. He said, no, I don't have no money. I don't, I don't have it. I can't repay you. And that individual that was just forgiven much, given such a debt that he could never pay off, and he went to this man that just owed him like pennies, and he threw him in prison. Sometimes I have to remember what has been given to me. I have to focus on the debt that has been erased in my life. I can't lose sight, we can't lose sight of the fact that we owe a debt greater than any of us could ever pay, so much so that Jesus had to come. And when we focus and we begin to set our mind on that, then all of a sudden we recognize that everything that I have is, is not my own. Everything that I have doesn't belong to me. The very breath in my lungs, the very life that I live, is not because of what I've earned, it's not because I've done something, but it's been a gift from God. And as we begin to believe this, as we begin to focus on this, I believe it will open our heart because I believe that grateful people give generously. What would happen in that story if the, if the individual who, who owed much then also became grateful for what he had just received and then forgives much? We have an opportunity with, with how we focus and where we focus our attention on what we need or what is owed us or what has been given to us and what we have received. And I believe when we focus on what we have received, we can be a people who are generous because grateful people are generous. Abraham and the story continues. God gave them his son. He gave them the, 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 sorry, the heir that was going to be able to multiply 
God said, no, that which you have received, give back to me. Sacrifice your son. And Abraham was a man of faith and obedience. Even imagine what it would have been like in that moment to be the son preparing the sacrifice. Getting the animal prepared, getting the, 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 the cattle prepared with the, with the wood on top of it, ready to go up the mountain, knowing that we've done this before as a family. This is not a, a newborn child at the moment. And, 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 and heading towards the sacrifice with nothing to sacrifice. Abraham was so confident in who God was that he prepared his son. He prepared the wood and he went up in obedience to God, knowing God would provide. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 in the message, it says this, Tell those rich in this world wealth to quit being so full of themselves, so obsessed with money, which is here today and gone tomorrow. Tell them to go after God, who piles on all the riches we could ever manage, to do good with them, to be rich in helping others, to be extravagantly generous. If they do that, they'll build a treasury that will last, gaining life that is truly life. We have an opportunity now in this moment, in this current time, to be extravagantly generous with our neighbors. We have an opportunity to care for those who are around us. We have an opportunity to care for those who are at home today. We have a, an opportunity now to be extravagantly generous, not to hoard for ourselves, not to build up wealth as, 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 as Paul tells the first uh, sorry, as Paul tells Timothy in First Timothy here. That we are not to be ones that, that hoard up riches for ourselves. No, we are to be ones who help others to be extravagantly generous. This morning I want to introduce the uh, idea and the opportunity not only to be generous in our regular tithes and our offering. If, if you have not taken that next step with God, I, I, I challenge you to start there. To start with obedience there. That God is asking you to, to tithe regularly, to, to give a tenth of your income, to give in the regular offering. Uh, start at that step. But I also believe that God is challenging us to do something even greater than what our regular tithes and offerings are. And I'm introducing this morning that at the end of March, we're going to be giving a next-gen offering. If you were this morning after uh, our gathering, go and just walk into the nursery or, or go and walk downstairs. There's uh, our next generation ministry, our, our children, our, our middle schoolers, our, our elementary, our high school, uh, are, are lacking resources right now. We want to create a nursery that parents feel comfortable bringing their kids to. You say, oh, pastor, we don't have that many babies right now. Well, I, I believe babies are coming. Mm -hmm. All right, babies are coming. We've got to prepare for the babies that God are bringing. We've got an uh, elementary area. If you guys go down there, you will see that beautiful uh, floor that some of you guys helped me uh, lay is now not, not terribly full of scratches, but it got scratches everywhere. Why? Because we don't really have the right chairs to be down in that space. We don't have kids' chairs, nice little rubber feet, and, and so that all the kids can sit. You know, all, each one of the rooms, they don't have tables in there. We, we can't use them for toddler's age or, or toys that they can play with, and specifically toys that we can sanitize on a regular basis that are made of hard plastic and not soft uh, things that can... So we're, we're going to be taking up a next, gener next generation offering at the end of the month. I'm, I'm making an outrageous goal. Can I just share an outrageous goal that I make, I'm making? Yes. All right? I believe in God for $10,000 for us to totally renovate or continue to complete the renovations.
sorry, because I know we started downstairs, but to complete the renovation. And so I believe that in this room, online, in our, in our church family, that we have $10,000 that we can give. Rachel and I are going to sow the first seed of $1,000 into the offering for the next generation. Um, and I'm going to believe that as a church, we're going to say, you know what, God? All that we can do to help this next generation find Jesus, we're going to do. And so I want you guys to be praying from now until March 29th. Okay, God, what is it that you're asking me to do? How are you asking me to be outrageously generous for the sake of more kids coming to Jesus? I believe that we've got to prepare now for the kids that he's going to come. I know as a church, we've seen the same kids, you know, for a couple of years now. And we know everybody. We know them by name. But there's going to be a, t a moment, there's going to be a time where that nursery is going to be full of babies. Amen. Babies crying. Babies laughing, babies giggling and gooing and con and all that, that fun stuff, right? Because they're going to be in there enjoying the peace and the presence of God. And, and their parents are going to be in here hearing from Jesus and, and growing and taking next steps with Jesus. And our, and our kids' ministry downstairs is going to be thumping. They're going to have some good fun. They're going to be able to be well-equipped to establish the truth of Jesus deep in their heart. And they're going to, they're going to have space down there that they can have a ton of fun. It's going to start with our obedience to say, yes, God, I, we're willing to be outrageously generous so that we can raise $10,000 to, to get all the equipment and all of the necessary tools to be able to make this happen. So pray with me on that, that God will say, yes, this is the exact amount. Some of you guys can sell that seed of a thousand or more uh, uh, to, to this gift. Some of you guys can, can do a different amount. Pray and say, God, what is it? Because just like I remember being in that moment when we went to that ice cream shop and having no clue that God was going to say, pay for this lady's rent and pay for her utilities. And we said, oh, we have the right amount. We had not even saved it for a different purpose. We wanted to go out some fun. We were on vacation. We did want a vacation. <laughs> but God said, no, sow this generously into a life. And for a while there, we were able to share Jesus with that individual and prayed with her, became friends on Facebook. God does great things when we choose to put what we have into his hands. And this, and in this next generation offering, we're, we're, we're doing something. We're placing our gifts, our possession into his hands so that he can receive glory as all these kids come to know him as Savior. Amen? In this moment that Abraham's hiking up, he, he sets up the altar and he knew, he had confidence that God would provide. Why? Because he knew all of it belonged to him. God, in the moment, he gives, uh, Abraham gets his son and ties him up. He's on the altar. He's ready with the knife in hand. He's I mean, talk about the extreme obedience. He's going all the way because he knew all the way to that point of saying, yes, God. But he knew God would come through. In the moment's time, an angel directs his attention to the ram that was caught in the thicket, prepared ahead of time for the sacrifice that Abraham Abraham was going to make. I have full confidence that God will provide everything that is necessary for our generous giving. Who am I talking to today? And I believe I'm, I'm talking to individuals that, that have everything, that have what they need. I, I'm also talking to some individuals that, that may have nothing and may have little. I'm also talking to those who have been forgiven much. Who understand what it's like for their debt to be forgiven, to be set free, to be erased. We are a church that is going to be focused on giving generously out of the response of God's generous gift. As I mentioned earlier, growing equal change. 
growing people become more like Jesus. And as a church, we're going to be focused on the things that God is focused on. And it's going to cause us, it's going to challenge us to grow. It's going to cause us to, to look more like Him. I'm looking forward in an expectation to hearing more and more, just as we've heard over the years past. And as we go forward, we're going to hear more and more how God is challenging us, how God is changing us. Why? Because growing people, people who have their eyes fixed on God, we change. We become more like Him. <coughs> so if you haven't taken the next steps of faith and, and even giving generously, tithing, man, I, I would challenge you to start today. This afternoon or this morning after the message, we're going to have an opportunity to give in the offering. And start today with a gift to the Lord. If you have been giving faithfully in your tithes and your offering, then consider today, God, what are you challenging me to give above my tithe and offering for your glory, for your sake, for other people to come to Jesus? Whatever the next level, whatever the next step that God is asking us to take, I believe this wholeheartedly, that God is challenging us, that God is asking us uh, as a church to be focused on being grateful people who give generously. Let's take a moment this morning to pray. Father, I am so grateful for, for who you are. God, I am grateful that my sins have been wiped clean. God, I ask that as you challenge us to be a people who change, to be a people who look more like you, God, I pray that you would help us to be a people who are uh, outrageously generous with the possessions that we have because, Father, we know who has given them to us. Thank you, Father, for these gifts. May we grow in generosity. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to invite the worship team to join me on stage. This morning at the beginning of our message, I, I mentioned that we would have an opportunity to respond to hope. Jesus is the hope of this world. He brings us focus, he brings us purpose, and he brings us forgiveness. God sent his son to give us life, and the life that Jesus gives he grants us peace with God, a family to belong to, a new purpose, a greater hope, a more direct focus. In order to receive hope this morning, in order to receive from Jesus this morning, we've got to do one thing. We've got to talk to God. We've got to pray. We believe in our heart that what Jesus has done for us, we need to confess with our mouths that we will follow Jesus all the days of our life. This morning, I want to lead us in a moment of prayer. And if you want to put your faith in Jesus, if you want to receive this hope, if you want to make Jesus Lord over every area of your life, I want to invite you to pray with us. Together, we will all pray together this morning as we are a family. We don't do things alone. So right now, let's take a moment to pray, to confess our, our faith in Jesus, and to make him Lord of our life. So you can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, thank you for the life you lived. Thank you for, life you lived. Thank you for forgiving me of sin. Thank you for forgiving me of sin. Jesus, I ask right now in this moment that you would cleanse me and make me whole. Jesus, I want to live for you and follow you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I pray these things. I pray these things. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I believe that if you prayed that prayer today, if you're making a decision in your heart to follow Jesus, the Word of God says that you have entered a life as a believer.